Do you know how to bypass a VFD? Do you know what a VFD is? Today I'll tell you what a VFD is and I'll talk about why I'm bypassing this VFD and I'm also gonna show you how I bypass this VFD. It's very easy, just some wire and a contactor, literally just one component and we can bypass this and get this unit running again. So if you wanna learn how to bypass this VFD, check out this video. Before we start, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and get started with today's video. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. So first, show you the unit that I am bypassing the VFD on. Let me talk about why I'm doing this. Ever since I installed this piece of equipment, and I've installed quite a few of these, not had many issues, which is great, that's what you want, but this one, it's 85, 90 degrees outside, and every few weeks, I have an issue with it. And the board says that it's the VFD. Now I've went through and set up the board to make sure it's set up properly. And since I don't really wanna order a part, I don't wanna wait. I wanna go ahead and do what I know is gonna work and just get it over with because the customer deserves to have air and I shouldn't have to wait for a part, even if that is the problem. And I thought it'd be a good idea. You know what, get rid of this VFD. Shut the power off. Here's the three pole contactor that I am going to use. It's got a 24 volt coil right here. So this will be where our call will come in. And look at that. Take the cover off and you can see there's the power coming in for the motor, three legs. And then here is the power going to the motor, three legs. Isn't that nice? All right, let's get to work. Got a couple self-tap 5 16 screws, and that's what I'm going to use to mount the contactor. You can see we've got the wires matching from inlet to outlet. We got black, brown, yellow, black, brown, yellow. And now you can see that the power in and out through the VFD, there's nothing on those terminals. So I'm using the contactor. All right, let's get it mounted. Now this is the wires that are left on the VFD and I've got a couple uh, spades connected to some wires here and I'm ready to hook up the wires to the coil so I can energize this motor whenever it calls for cooling. If you wanna know what a VFD is, take a minute, pause the video right here and read through this. This is some good information and gives you a lot of detail about what the VFD actually is and how it works. Now, this is the plugs for the thermostat wire connections for the simplicity control. And you can see they're up there. C and G is what I want. So I've got a wire connected to the C terminal and then I've got a wire connected to the G terminal. And I'll put these back on the board and show you how that's hooked up. So when we get a call for our fan, which is common and G, then we're gonna energize our contactor over there all right let me put these back on the board and show you all right so there's our thermostat connections you can see there's a g right there and that's where we stuck that black wire in and then go down to the c and that's where we stuck the brown wire in so now we've got two wires to energize our coil ran the couple wires over here and then connected the g here and the c here so once I apply power and it calls for cooling, it should also call for the fan and we should see it come on. Now it would be better to mount the contactor in here. It would be closer to the low voltage wiring up here and it would be out of the airstream. So I just want you to know that if you do this, it's better to mount the contactor in here. Now you're gonna have to do some different configurations for your wiring, but it's just a better location. So I use some wire strippers. I use an extension, a thermostat screwdriver here, and then I had a couple of bits for my drill flathead Phillips and some wire nuts. Just wanted you to know what tools I was using. All right, let's turn the power on, get it going. Power back on. Now, while we're waiting for the startup, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the wiring. All right, just going over some schematics here. This is the indoor motor. See how it says IDMTR? And that's the power going to the motor. And then there's a set of contacts, uh, three contacts to be exact. So that's the contactor we installed. There's the fuses. That's the power that leads to the contactor. And then back from there, you've got it going to the main power supply, of course. 
This is the contactor for the compressor, number one. Look at that, that's PHS, that's a phase loss monitor. That's an optional accessory. That's right there, so. This says for VFD options, see optional VFD wiring or optional VFD bypass wiring. So this is the section right here where you can look at the different wiring options. The first optional VFD bypass wiring, and this is control voltage basically. Go over here to the left, optional VFD wiring, shows a VFD powering the motor. All right, I'm gonna turn the thermostat on now. Let's see if it works. Cooling on, good deal. Fans are running, compressors are running, and our indoor motor is running. Yay! Now, let's use our meter, check the voltage to the contactor. All right, now we're gonna check the voltage to our coil here. I've got my leads going to my meter, and I am going to check like this right here. We should have about 24 volts. So we got 24 volts. Now let's check the power coming in, 240. Check from another leg here, like this, 240, and then check the last leg, 240, perfect. So we got plenty of voltage going to the motor, and now we've bypassed that VFD. The best way to learn is to self-teach, to figure it out, to learn. While you're in the field, take the time, the extra time after you fix the unit to go through the wiring, to look at the different components, to figure out how it's wired and how it works. That way you can be the best you. Make sure that if you do this, that you are certain that in the cooling mode it turns on in cooling that you go shut the thermostat off you make sure that it turns off and also that it works in heating there may have to be some adjustments made we're going to try this unit in heating now and make sure that it works heat is on now let's see what happens man it's hot in here unit is on heating you can hear the fan running let me show you what i had to do to make sure that it energized the G terminal. So that right there is the G terminal. The C and the G is what I needed to energize in the heating operation. And there's a little switch back here. Now you may have to do some programming to uh, make sure that it energizes the G terminal. But if I left it in the gas position, even though this is a gas unit, then the thermostat would no longer control that fan in the heating operation. It would be the unit, all right? It would be the board. So I had to switch to electric so that it would energize that G terminal, okay? Because it would just energize the W terminal in the heating operation if I set it to gas, but I set it to electric. Now that we've changed the configuration on the thermostat, that setting from gas to electric, now our fan starts right up. Is this more efficient having the contactor versus the VFD? Of course it's not more efficient. That VFD allowed us not to pull horrendous lock rotor amps. It had a soft startup and now we don't have a delay for our blower motor. So it just comes right on and now of course you can hear the inducer motor running and now the gas is running, but left me no choice. Sometimes there's no one to call and you've got to just figure it out and you've got to make sure that you take care of the customer and that's what I'm doing. The customer doesn't really care if there's a VFD and I don't either. They haven't always installed VFDs in this type of equipment and now that they do install VFDs, you have one type of VFD and then you have another type of VFD. Is it normal for me to have to bypass VFDs? No, it's not normal. In fact, this is the first one I've ever had to bypass, but it was because I don't need the customer to be without air. And I know that if I can't get an ETA on a part, then I know it's gonna be a little bit for that customer. And for me, I know that I can make sure that they do have air conditioning by doing this. So I have to take control and I have to make sure that I make my customer happy because it's a reflection of the service that I offer and the quality that we offer at our company.
So that's why I did this and I was hoping that if you had a need like this, that you saw this video and it helped you to be able to do the same exact thing. And you don't have to have the headache of a customer that has a brand new unit that now they don't want the unit because every month it's had a failure and they've been left without air conditioning. As you can see, it was 85 degrees in there. And this is the fourth, I think, fourth time, way too many times. So took care of it and I hope it helps you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know in the comments what you learned. If you have a question, put it in the comments. Questions are great because they become content. So ask me a question. I promise you I will answer your question or I will try my best. Let me know in the comments if you don't have a question who you are and where you're from. I'd love to know who my viewers are. You want more videos like this? I've got a whole playlist full of videos like this. It's called HVAC Tips for Technicians. Link is in the description. Go check out the playlist. Before you leave, hit the like button. Subscribe. Hit that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. Really appreciate you watching. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.